Let's go back to you're in London, you're unemployed. And eventually, things did look up. Well, let's face it, they weren't going downhill from here. <laughs> On January the 13th, 1969, King Crimson was born in the basement of the Fulham Palace Cafe on the Fulham Palace Road in London. It was a Monday. Our first performance was on April the 9th, 1969, at the Speakeasy Club in London. The Speakeasy Club was right in the centre of London and was a watering hole for the industry. It was also known as the Speak Loudly and Coarsely Club. <laughs> And we played there on April the 9th, our first King Crimson performance, and went from nowhere to national success overnight. National success because, although there weren't many people there, maybe 100, 150, these were the people that influenced the people. These were the people that said, this is the band. So from nowhere to somewhere in one night, our 10th performance, which was on May the 14th, 1967, we were playing at the Revolution Club in Mayfair. It was a Wednesday. And this was the first occasion that I sat down on a stool playing in King Crimson. All my background as a practicing guitarist, even at the Majestic, was sitting down and I found that I could not stand and play well. So I said to the band, I have to sit down and play. Greg Lake, the singer in the band said, you can't sit down, you look like a mushroom. <laughs> I did not point out that in many cultures, the mushroom is looked upon as a potent virile sign. <laughs> so the management bought me a stool and I sat down. And I believe we played three sets, which was conventional then. And after the first set, we went, we went to the, the band area downstairs, and the man came up to me. And he was dressed in a white suit, white suit. And his right arm was in a sling. And his characteristic was of luminosity. He shone. And he came up. Shake my left hand, man. It's closer to my heart. This was Jimi Hendrix. Now, if we leap forward to May 1981, when King Crimson was staying at the Portobello Hotel, Notting Hill, I was walking down from the hotel to Basing Street Studios, Island Studios on Basing Street, where King Crimson were recording an album called Discipline which was turned down by CBS Epic on the grounds that it was second-rate talking heads. That's just to the side. So I was walking down to the studios, and being something of a bibliophile, I looked into the bookshop just off Portobello Road, and the woman working behind the counter said, Loretta Land, can you remember me? This was Michael Giles, the drummer of King Crimson in 1969, it was his sister-in-law. And she said, can you remember when Jimi Hendrix came to see you at the Revolution Club? And I said, of course, it's my Hendrix story. <laughs> and she said, did you know that I was sitting on the next table to Hendrix at the Revolution? And I said, no. And Loretta said, he was jumping up and down saying, this is the best band in the world. And at that time we were. For about three months we were the best band in the world. And that's another story. Now we, we now move to point eight on the stages from good to better than that. After we present our work to the world, unless we get recognition and acknowledgement from someone who is at least a competent authority in the field, it's time to take up plumbing. 
or carpentry, or go home to our mother in Wimborne. <laughs> so, the, the three main stages of this. Injunction, do this. Application, we, we practice. We, we put inside us our training so that it's embodied and we can speak on behalf of our field. And then the third final stage is verification, which for the performing musician is generally, you play in public. And if the audience get on the feet and cheer, this might be acknowledgement. <coughs> but on May the 14th, 1969 in London, England, if Jimi Hendrix said, this was acknowledgement. What would it mean to you, your career, your company, if every time you stood up in front of five, 50 or 500, in a boardroom, training center or convention hall, if you were confident, you were powerful, persuasive, professional, compelling on message and a resounding success. If you want to accelerate your career, transform sales results, develop leadership skills, or even become an in-demand, highly paid professional speaker, then Fripp Virtual Training is designed for you. Fripp VT Powerful Persuasive Presentations is my highly interactive, learn at your own pace virtual training around all area of presentations. It is almost as if I am there, sitting next to you, helping. Fripp Virtual Training is a multi-million dollar, state-of-the-art, web-based training platform. It is designed to closely emulate personal training and coaching. It's almost as if I am sitting with you 24-7 as your own personal speech coach and sales trainer. Sign up now, take a free trial, and experience three of our content-rich chapters. Then join and take advantage of my 30-plus years experience and in-depth study. Make the commitment to your career. Reap the benefits of Fripp VT by making it consistent part of your personal development. You'll be glad you did.